Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at getting into your first street spots. So first thing I'm going to say about street spots is it doesn't have to be your go-to stair set with a rail down it. You could just be messing around, jibbing some bench, maybe a trash can you found. Just getting outside the snow park and having fun jibbing on your snowboard counts as street snowboarding as far as I'm concerned. Why street snowboarding? So a lot of people will be wondering, my mum included, why would you not just want to snowboard in the snow park? Everything's built for you, you've got a lift, etc. However, street snowboarding can be really rewarding whether you're hitting something big or small. Your feature's not going to be created for snowboarding. It's going to force you to problem solve and get creative with how you're hitting your spot and making it work. You're also going to have an output at the end of it. I don't know many people who go street snowboarding who don't film what they're doing, even if it's just on their phone with their friends. And at the end, you're going to have something to look back on, something to be proud of that's going to be rewarding for you. The other thing with street snowboarding is it's going to challenge you. And I think for most people, the reason that they snowboard and find it fun is to some level they're challenging themselves and improving and that's where a lot of the satisfaction comes and street snowboarding is going to give you that. It's going to push you outside of your comfort zones. It's going to make you do things that you wouldn't necessarily do in the snow park. You're going to have to overcome obstacles and I think that that's why it's really awesome. So I'd encourage all of you guys to get out there, try and find a spot, pick something that's suitable to your skill level, build up to it. Don't go straight into a damn breezy three-story high building as a feature. So I'm going to talk about some of the key factors that affect you when you're trying to ride your snowboard outside of the park, trying to find some jibs in a kind of street urban environment. First one is speed. So speed, you're going to have a few options. Your best option is to find a spot that has a natural hill above it, or it's on a hill, or there's a hill before a flat. If you need, you can build little speed bumps, so little kind of bumps of snow that you can pump across flat areas to hold your speed if there's a hill and then there's a flat section. Your next option is gonna be the bungee. It's probably the least good option, in my opinion. Whilst it's really fun getting bungeed and you get a kind of adrenaline with it and excitement, you need at least three of your friends to pull the bungee for you to be going at any speed. Every time you want to have a go, you've got to get three other people to pull the bungee. You don't always get the exact same speed, and it's just generally a bit of a nightmare. The bungee smashing into things draws more noise and attention. You've got more chance of getting kicked out. The next option we're going to talk about is a winch. The uh, first problem is most people don't have a winch. They're fairly expensive. They're loud, but they do have a more consistent speed than a bungee and you can get up to quite a speed so if your spot really doesn't have a hill near it and you really want to ride that spot it's going to be your best option that's why you'll see a lot of athletes at XM drill snow etc want to ride really big features riding with a winch next option is the wooden dropping ramp which has its limits to how much speed you can get and also you've got to then transport it so you either need a big truck, a van, or to somehow strap it to your car roof and then carry it to the spot. But it does save you a lot of time compared to our next option which is building a snow dropping ramp. Building a snow dropping ramp sometimes is your only option. You might not be in your home city so you might not have a dropping ramp out of wood. You might not have a winch with you, etc. If you're somewhere really snowy, you've maybe booked a flight to go somewhere that's snowy to film some street. There's plenty of snow about. If you, especially if you've got one of those big tray shovels in an hour or two, you can pretty quickly get a pretty big dropping ramp out. They do occasionally cave in and they're not the fastest, but it is an option and you can always build it exactly to specification for your spot. So now that you've found some kind of way of getting speed for your spot, we're going to talk about the kind of consequences of the spot so a lot of the time one of the big positives and also big negatives of filming street is that your spots will be higher consequence so 
the more difficult it is to come off early or whatever, the cooler your shot's going to be in a lot of ways. Danger is part of what we're looking for if you were to kind of judge what a lot of people think is cool in street snowboarding. However, you are definitely going to want to consider which tricks you're doing and which side you're likely to come off and what the consequences are in advance before you come off early and find out that you've just hit a trick. First thing to consider when thinking about where you're going to come off early on your spot and the kind of consequences of that is going to be the stairs. Stairs are not impossible to ride down, but you definitely want to be kind of flat based. And one of the key things you want to watch out for is slipping out, trying to slow down and then putting your legs underneath the supports of the rail because it's really, really easy way to bang your knees up and actually do yourself quite a lot of serious damage. There's the whole scrape the stairs, don't scrape the stairs argument. I would say if you're just kind of messing around, hitting your first street spot, probably don't bother scraping the stairs. If you want to film and your goal is to film a street part that you want to see and it watch and people watch, if you don't scrape the stairs, you're not going to see that it's in an urban environment. And because of that, the sort of aesthetic element of your shot is going to be greatly decreased. So whilst I originally was not a stair scraper, I very much would encourage it now. That doesn't mean you just scrape every little bit of snow off of the stairs. Just cut the backs of the stairs and take most of the snow out so you can see there's a staircase there. Next thing to talk about is closeout rails. If you've got a spot that's got a closeout, think about which tricks are one going to look good with the closeout, but also you've got to pick a trick that you're not going to come off on the side of the closeout right before the rail. So if you're still just getting your front boards down and you quite often come off on the inside, don't pick a closeout rail where you come off on the inside because you're going to get closed out and you're probably going to fall over it, smash your back into the closeout and you're probably going to get hurt. You've also got to look at whether there's a big drop on either side of the rail. There might be a river underneath, some water, etc. It just might be a really high drop to car park garage or whatever. You can sometimes do something about that. So if the spot's not, if you're not going to be in people's way, you can maybe pile up a bit of extra snow on the outside where there's a big drop to make sure that if you do fall off, it's not going to be as bad. The other thing is just, again, trick for spot so consider which tricks am i gonna maybe come off on that side and maybe avoid those tricks or at least be cognizant of putting your weight a little bit more on whichever the safer side is the next thing to consider is what spot you're actually riding so if we're going to take our kind of traditional rail spots look at the material of your rail is it slidey is the rail going to be strong enough to support you is it going to break the one to watch out for as well as people always think about rusty rails. Normally you can file those or put a bit of wax on them and you can kind of deal with it. But aluminium rails are really soft and quite often your edge will actually dig into it and that will prevent you sliding or catch your edge. So in board slide tricks, I'd kind of steer clear of aluminium as much as possible. Um, in terms of wall rides, wood or whatever, check that it's strong enough, check that it's slidey enough if you need to put some snow on it, if you maybe need to put some water on it, there are things that you can do to make your spot more suitable to you and that's totally fine, I'd encourage that. Next thing to consider when selecting a spot is going to be your in run and out run. So we've already talked about whether there's enough speed from the in run if there's a hill above it but the other thing to consider is is there a road on the in run that you're going to need to put snow over and then cars are going to drive over and then you're not going to have any speed is there something in the way that you're going to have to turn around that's going to put your line in off which is going to make your life harder and then the same for the landing you've got to consider is there a road there that you're going to run out on and not be able to stop and get murked by a car 
Is there a tree you need to know about so that you don't ride into it, etc. And I'm not saying you don't want to ride these spots. A lot of street snowboarding is adapting to what you have and finding a way to make that rideable, which is a lot of the fun in it and a lot of the skill in it. But you just want to be aware of these things. If you're hitting your first ever street rail, you probably don't want to pick one that runs out onto a motorway. That doesn't mean if there's a bench on the in run, you don't want to do a little trick on the bench and then land and then hit the rail or something if that's within your skill set. Last thing to kind of cover when choosing spots for your sort of getting in street snowboarding is going to be the risk of getting kicked out. Normally, if you get kicked out, it will be either a nosy person getting involved or a security guard, or you'll be causing some kind of a problem to people. Normally, people are less likely to get involved if you're not causing a problem. So try and pick a spot that's kind of out of the way where you're not going to have to put snow somewhere that's going to annoy people. A lot of the ones I've got kicked out of have been having snow kind of in front of car parks or parking garages and the people trying to get in into them because their houses or offices are there are annoyed even if you're not actually in their way. Um, the other one to consider is just is it a big residential area obviously it's street snowboarding we're going to be doing it in cities a lot but if you pick the main high street you're much more likely to get kicked out than if you're in the back car park of an office that's closed we have a thing in austria where i live in the winter we call it sunday spots so businesses that are closed on sundays when we want to go ride those spots we go on a sunday because it's just going to make your life easier. There's less people there. There's less chance of the security guard coming to kick you out, somebody from the police, etc. And the last one I want to say is politeness goes a long way. You can, if you try and explain to people what you're doing, the fact that you're maybe filming some snowboarding with your friends, you're not trying to break anything, that you'll clear your snow up at the end, and just generally are polite to them, you've got a much bigger chance of getting to continue riding for a few hours rather than if you get really aggro with them.